Welcome to all of you on this holy day in the house of the Lord in the presence of the triune God, ready and willing to worship and receive the goodness of God into our lives. You know, honestly, every Sunday at some time or another, Jesus puts a smile on my face. It always happens. That smile gets so much bigger when the Longhorns trounce the sooner. <laughs> How good does that feel? So, we, oh, what a beautiful morning it is. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, so, uh, we have a full day today with our Bible study and discipleship classes after this, and then the big activity on Wednesday, the Oktoberfest luncheon right here 12 noon everyone's invited and then on saturday we'll have tacos and prayers opportunity to be involved in that and make connections with the community we're thankful today that betsy martino is serving as our organist in alina stead and also if you happen to see carl rep around today's his birthday so uh, be sure he remembers that Anything else that we need to announce? Sharon? Yeah, um, a week from tomorrow, we're going to the nation, we're going to go to the Texas Olive Oil Company in Jersey Springs. There's still some spaces available, so sign up and be back here on the weekend. Real good. Sign up today if you'd like to go on the day trippers week from Monday. And with that, we'll share the peace of Christ with one another. You just Praise and petitions we can lift up this morning. Betsy?
thank God for medical developments for Charlotte's benefit. We pray that that would continue. She gets good results. Suzanne. Sister-in-law, Vicki. Yeah, Vicki, Francis, commending them to the Lord and praying God continue to sustain them in faith and lead them to brighter days ahead. John. Thanking God for two successful operations for family and praying that they'll have full recovery now and continue strong in the grace of God. Alex? But thank you, Lord, that your pretty little wife is with us today. This yes. one, yeah. Yes, yes. thank you. Successful <laughs> surgery. Thanking the Lord for successful surgery for Terry and and on the men now and praying for a full recovery day by day. Betty. Friend Diane trapped in despair and asked God to reach out to her and lift her up and set her on a better course for tomorrow. Elena. Um, Matt lost his best friend, John, yesterday. Hmm. So, praying comfort for, for those who mourn the loss of a good friend, John, asking God to sustain in the hope of resurrection and also provide for need during this time. Francis. Yes, for Francis. Yes. Covered in prayer, and that must be why she's making such a good recovery. And looking ahead to next week and a return home. Ruth. Ask the Lord to provide rain. Open the heavens and let us have it for the sake of his good earth. All this lifted up to God in the name of Jesus Christ, leading us into the hymn, Drawn to the Cross. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, I confess that I am by nature sinful and unclean. I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. is from Psalms 48 and 34. In the city belonging to our God, I praise the Lord. Let the suffering listen and rejoice. I sought the Lord and he answered me. When the righteous cry out, the Lord listens. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever.
us pray. Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness, give thanks for your compassion, and praise your holy name. The Old Testament reading for the 18th Sunday after Pentecost is from Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 through 19a. During the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. A man with his wife and two sons went from Bethlehem of Judah to dwell in the territory of Moab. The name of that man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They entered Moab and settled there. But Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Then only she was left, along with her two sons. They took wives for themselves, Moabite women. The name of the first was Orpha, and the name of the second was Ruth. And they lived there for about ten years. But both of the sons, Malon and Gilion, also died. Only the woman was left without her two children and without her husband. Then she arose along with her daughters-in-law to return from the field of Moab, because while in the territory of Moab she had heard that the Lord had paid attention to his people by providing food for them. She left the place where she had been, and her two daughters-in-law went with her. They went along the road to return to the land of Judah. Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, Go, turn back, each of you, to the household of your mother. May the Lord deal faithfully with you, just as you have done with the dead and with me. May the Lord provide for you so that you may find security, each woman in the household of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. But they replied to her, No, instead, we will return with you to your people. Naomi replied, Turn back, my daughters. Why would you go with me? Will there again be sons in my womb that they would be husbands for you? Turn back, my daughters. Go, I am too old for a husband. If I were to say that I have hope, even if I had a husband tonight, and even more, if I were to bear sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you refrain from having a husband? No, my daughters. This is more bitter for me than for you, since the Lord's will has come out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. Orpha kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law is returning to her people and to her gods. Turn back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, Do not urge me to abandon you, to turn back from following after you. Wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me, and more so if even death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her about it. So both of them went along until they arrived at Bethlehem. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. So, my child, draw your strength from the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Take the things you heard me say in front of many other witnesses and pass them on to faithful people who are also capable of teaching others. Accept your share of suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Nobody who serves in the military gets tied up with civilian matters, 
so that they can please the one who recruited them. Also, in the same way, athletes do not win unless they follow the rules. A hard-working farmer should get the first share of the crop. Think about what I am saying. The Lord will give you understanding about everything. Remember Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead and descended from David. This is my good news. This is the reason I am suffering to the point that I am in prison like a common criminal. But God's word cannot be imprisoned. This is why I endure everything for the sake of those who are chosen by God so that they too may experience salvation in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This saying is reliable. If we have died together, we will also live together. If we endure, we will also rule together. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are disloyal, he stays faithful because he cannot be anything else than what he is. This is the word of the Lord. Stand for the verse. Hallelujah. Now even more, the report about him went abroad. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with skin diseases approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to him, Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. We sing the hymn. <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We heard the story of Ruth and Naomi in today's Old Testament reading. Sometimes we might sanitize the real life experience that they had. Yet it wasn't like a Hallmark movie where you know everything is going to be wrapped up and all good in two hours. There was severe hardship and ongoing turmoil in very stressful circumstances. First, there was a famine in the area around Bethlehem of Judah. That was at a time when there was no governmental relief available, no Department of Health and Human Services to call on, no capital area food bank to go to. So this family of four, dad, mom, and two sons, descended from the noble tribe of Judah, is forced to move to a foreign country just to stay alive. They were now outsiders, strangers, unwelcomed in a place that was definitely not the promised land. But there they were, Elimelech, Naomi, Malon, Chilion, starting a new life in Moab. Then the worst possible thing happens. The patriarch, the husband, the father, Elimelech, dies. That is almost always a devastating event, but even more so then, Because in one day, the family lost their place in society. Their security was destroyed. Their future was dark. And their lives were in jeopardy. But they were survivors. The two sons meet local women, get married, And for 10 years, the family seems to have some normalcy. Until again, the worst possible thing happens. The two sons die. And now the three women literally have no one to depend on. Both their protection and their provision have vanished. All earthly support had been wiped out. The only path Naomi saw was a return to her homeland of Judah where the Lord had apparently ended the food crisis. Can you sense the desperation Can you imagine the despair? Can you feel the pain? From any rational perspective, Naomi's life was ruined. Expectations were crushed. Dreams were broken. Hopes were shattered. She had been reduced to practically nothing. If Job's wife had been there, she would have said, you might as well curse God and die. But then Naomi offers a remarkable sacrifice. She releases her two daughters-in-law from any continuing obligation. She relieves them of the burden of caring for her. She refuses to make them move to a foreign land. Instead, she blesses them with an opportunity that she didn't get. Hope and a future. May the Lord provide for you in the security of a husband. 
Naomi's love for them is so deep and so strong that she is willing to say goodbye and part ways. She is ready to give up the last of her earthly comfort and support so that Orpah and Ruth can have a fresh start and a chance at a happy life. while not coming in a beautiful setting or a joyful scene, what she offered was truly a gift. She surrenders her own wants and needs in order to bless someone else's life. Naomi is the first model of a loyal love in this story. That leads us to Ruth, usually much more renowned from the book that bears her name. And Ruth's declaration of faithfulness has rung out and inspired for more than 3,000 years. Wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. An unconditional pledge of loyalty with no strings attached. Even more remarkable, she says this to her mother-in-law of all people. Usually not the most beloved of characters, usually not the person with the greatest attachment of heart. No matter, Ruth is determined to stay by Naomi's side even in a land foreign to her. The two of them join together even unto death. Have you ever thought about why? What prompted Ruth to do such a thing? What provoked her? What motivated her? In the practical sense, maybe it was her best chance at survival. Although you would assume that she and her sister-in-law Orpah could have relied on each other. Or it could have been that her home in Moab held too many painful memories and so she wanted to leave them behind. It might have been that she had an adventurous streak and wanted to encounter something new and refreshing. However you try to explain it, it must be understood as the Lord's work. Through her husband and her mother-in-law, if not her own upbringing, she had come to know the living God of Israel. She was inspired to entrust her life to the Lord and follow him for whatever the future held. The reality of everlasting security in the Lord enabled Ruth to chart her course alongside Naomi. God's loyal love was the basis for her loyal love. And that leads us to the unnamed person in the story, except that you know his name is Jesus. And the Apostle Paul knew that his name is Jesus. As he wrote, Remember Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead and descended from David. That's actually King David, who was the the great-grandson of Ruth and the great-great-grandson of Naomi and the supreme promise of the coming Messiah. Jesus was appointed as the divine fulfillment of loyal love, the one who ties together all the generations 
in God's faithfulness. As St. Paul goes on to write, even if we are disloyal, he stays faithful because he cannot be anything else than he is. Think about how Jesus embodies the loyalty of his ancient ancestors. He left his beloved home to come to this foreign land where he was often unwelcomed and left out. He surrendered all that he was and all that he had for the sake of others. He sacrificed his just reward and rightful acclaim to give us hope and a future. He pledged God's loving kindness for eternity. And not just with words, but with the shedding of his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. And even now, he guarantees us his personal presence. Wherever you go, I will go. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Whatever loss you suffer, whatever heartbreak you experience, whatever hardship you encounter, whatever despair you face, hold on to God's steadfast love. Because neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses human understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. We stand and confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scripture and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is so high the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Spirit, that we would be taught constantly to pray, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And to trust that Christ has cleansed us by his blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for pastors, that God would preserve them from useless entanglements, fortify them in faithfulness when they must suffer, and remind them always that his word is not bound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for those baptized to have departed from the faith, that our ever faithful God would grant them penitent hearts so that they might obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Let us pray to the Lord. For adult children who care for their parents, that God would sustain them in wisdom and compassion, and for their parents, that they might accept needed assistance with a humble spirit, let us pray to the Lord. For an end to war and violence, for those who defend us against our enemies, for those who preserve order against the threat of terror, and for those who sit in judgment over evildoers, that justice and peace may prevail and we may all work together for the common good, let us pray to the Lord. For those in need of help, that the Lord would hear their prayers and deliver them from all their troubles and fears, let us pray to the Lord. For all who partake of the Lord's Supper this day, that Christ would visit them with his body and blood, cleansing them from the leprosy of sin and filling their mouths with thanks and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, grant that we may with grateful hearts receive all these things according to your merciful will. Lead us to respond with voices of praise and thanksgiving, lives of holiness and righteousness, displaying in outward form the faith that lives in our hearts. Give us faith that works in love, hope that does not disappoint, compassion that does not fail, and confidence in your mercy that does not waver, that we may live in your faith and fear all our days and at length fall asleep in the arms of your mercy and in everlasting peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We have time now to present our offerings to the Lord, to reflect on all that he brings into our lives that we can use for his purposes. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from me. We stand and prepare for the Holy Sacrament with the prayer of thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. 
Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, shed for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O oh, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.